It is February 5th, 2018, and this is Atlanta United FC Weekly, a home before dark podcast. Oh, oh! There it is. I've been waiting for that for like a month, man. Since we got back regular, you're so down and out. Oh, oh. I just, mm, oh. I'm so sick. Uh. <laughs> just of you. <laughs> just sick of you, Dan. <laughs> I'm oh, not surprised, man. Kevin. I am Tim Herb, and as always, I'm joined by my lovely co-host. We switched up the studio a little bit. We got some fabrication going on. Kevin did his engineer work, his architecture work, his homeowner, grown man, grown-ass man work, <laughs> and uh, got everything rigged up. We got much better setup now. We don't have to worry about Dan pulling microphones off the table. Heck yeah, it's Dan proof. Yeah, he'll find a way. <laughs> <laughs> What's that saying? Dan always finds yeah. a way. Yeah. That's that. That's that. That's, right. part. that's what she said. That's probably from. Uh, it's one of those Nicholas Sparks <laughs> after that many kids books. Like anyway, I'm joined as. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. Not everybody knows. Not everybody knows. Uh, as always, I got Kevin Bradley to my left. Yeah. That's me. And then Mr. Dan James, also to my left. Good morning. Or right. afternoon. <laughs> what is <laughs> Start again, Tim. Just start again. All right. I'm not even start. drinking. I know. Wholesale stop. I think that's part of the problem. He, 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 like, he's a better driver whenever he's drunk. He's a better talker whenever he's drunk. It's Much better father. Kyle Aaron? <laughs> um, and tonight. <laughs> tonight we have somehow swindled away uh, Mr. Joe Patrick of Dirty South Soccer. Uh, to join us in studio. Thanks for coming, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Welcome, Joe. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thanks for uh, coming out. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Appreciate we got. Um, yeah, we got comments already coming in about Orlando. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love it. Uh, Mama said Orlando City fans so ornery because they got all that history, but no playoffs. I think <laughs> I ain't got no playoffs. <laughs> got all that history and got no playoffs. I think that's probably my favorite thing I've seen so far about them. But anyway. I'm excited. A uh, little distraught tonight, but excited about this weekend coming up. Oh, whoa. Well, I don't want to get into the show yet. You, 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 I'm you, sorry, man. I keep doing this. so much stuff to get into. It's like you, okay. it's like you've never done this before. It's I, I get too excited. I we get got, ramped up. We sit here every week and beg for reviews. Oh, yeah, that's true. We get the whoa. floodgates to open up <laughs> for us hold this on, hold week. On, hold on. I'll stop. Stop. Let me do my part. I'll do my part. I, I didn't fulfill my legal obligations. If you're listening to us on iTunes, watching us on it or uh, watching us on YouTube, thank you for tuning in. Hit the subscribe button, the little bell. Make sure that you get the alert whenever we go live. Also, if you're listening to us on iTunes, as Kevin is alluding to, we read your reviews out on iTunes. Subscribe there. Leave a rating. Leave a review. No matter what it says, we'll read it out on the show. We got uh, three, three. I think three in the last week. We got. Uh, yeah, they're kind of lengthy too. So yeah, we take one each. Yes. Yeah, I think so. So you took the last two, right, Dan? Last week? I did. All right. So, Tim, I'm pretty sure you're on. It's an easy subscribe. All right. Five star. Joe, easy. sit patiently. It's Wait, an easy <laughs> It'll be over quick. It's an easy subscribe <laughs> by, by Eric Rash. He said, as someone from Michigan who moved to the South this year, you guys have been instrumental in bringing me into the Atlanta United fan base with the possibility of a Detroit expansion team being more unlikely after the Miami announcement. I look forward to deepening my Atlanta MLS roots this season. Very strong soccer IQ within this group. I don't know about that. Uh, great pod. He must have listened whenever we had other guests. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely See, caught that's, that that's in the, the, amidst guests. That's the whole thing. It's like from. we're bringing in these guests week in, week out that have more uh, knowledge than us. And then, yeah, we just ride their Which coattails. Is, I mean, another good segue into our intentions leading into the regular season where it's typically the three of us. We're we're definitely pride ourselves on bringing in the community and having rotating guests in and out. But um, the goal for us preseason leading up to regular season is have a different guest on every week. So we will continue that tradition next week with a guest spot, which we will maybe name later. Yeah, maybe um, so. You'll um, you'll you'll find out. So second one, uh, Atlanta United for the Cup 2018 from Crash underscore. You should have let me read this one. Well. It calls me out specifically, and you don't even let me read it. I'm sorry. You want to read it? No, you can read it. Okay. I like it whenever. So, uh, I, I like hearing it from other people. You guys are great. <laughs> <laughs> I tried listening to various podcasts before, but I never really liked any of them. The moment I listen to you guys, <laughs> I love the show. Very informative and highly entertaining. Keep it up, guys. At Kevin, I'm calling it that we win the cup this year. 
fuck Tim for making so many comments and <laughs> constantly bringing up the fact that he mentioned that you guys would make the playoffs last year. Oh, God, yeah. That's really not what it hey, says. Man. It says, at Tim, I'm calling that we win the Cup this year, just like you said, we'd make it to the playoffs last year. Yeah. Thanks, and then, Crash Brogan. And then Dan's got the last one. Yeah. Oh, you couldn't pull it up? God. No. Stupid thing. Stupid user. Pe- I think the, the term is pebcac. Is that too old school? Pebcac? That's that problem that makes it between keyboard and uh, oh. chair. Oh, yeah. I just say retard. Um, whoa. Whoa. Quaida whore. This is from Quaida whore. That was a little. Boys, loud. you the best. Seriously, guys, beautifully crafted podcast. <laughs> I know that's all Tim's doing. Um, I never find myself spacing out with this podcast when I'm listening to you guys. Keep up, keep me a hundred percent interested. You're, you're all wonderful host. Yes, even you, Dan. <laughs> keep it up, boys. <laughs> See that one was planned. You yeah. the best at Q U X D E Quixty. Nah, you the best. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, if you want to hear your review read aloud on the show, whatever it may be, be sure to throw them up on iTunes. Leave us any number of stars, whatever it is. We appreciate the hell out of you guys for checking us out. Um, last few things before we jump into the show, you guys might have seen on Twitter we are getting hats made. Dan, oh, we can't see it. Plastic. Gotta, Should I get up there? Yeah. Maybe All right. See. Take your headphones off first. Yes. Yep. Dan is going to do his best to destroy the studio. One way. All right. Move to the right. Yep, look uh, straight on. Can you? You had it. Mine's uh, that's mine's, good. mine's mirrored. That's though, good. That's here, fine. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's great. Oh, mic drop on the back. I love it. Boom. <laughs> so the first of three, in which the icon iconographic uh, plastic moniker is displayed proudly it above is. the five so you, stripes so with the recycle. Uh, emblem as well. Yeah, so yeah. Joe, you, you weren't the only one leading in asking about where that comes. We have got it in with a bunch of, or got into it with a bunch of Orlando fans over the past year. Multiple times. And along with the whole call about us, I mean, it goes into it, I guess, us not having history and all that. They call us plastic because of, uh, partially because of this. Yep. And our low a, soccer IQ. There is a printed plastic two pole that Jay Riddle, our, our mm-hmm. buddy over... Uh, we play on plastic turf. Yeah, we play on plastic mm-hmm. turf. So... We uh part of our fake, stadium. Stadium is made of plastic. We we are bought, not built, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Heck, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So uh, Marlboro Dew, who still best, one of my favorite best name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, still one of my favorite YouTube names. Asking about um, asking about what that is. Four. So, yeah, we have two other designs. Um, check them out on Twitter, which we're hoping to get in. We have been dealing with quite a lot of a big learning curve for us, figuring out how stitching and embroidery works. And stop playing the stream. You're eating all the bandwidth. No, he's fine. Oh, I think the read does it. It's okay. No, I think what killed it last week, to be honest, is I had Facebook Live going at yes, the same Kevin. time, and That's it was right. yeah, assholes. Anyway, <laughs> we're hoping to get the other hats in. Once we get those in, we'll get details on how you could order those if you would like to support the show. Um, we are not looking to make any kind of profit off of this. We have a lot of things planned this season, as we've mentioned before, and any proceeds that we get will directly go to contribute to those efforts. So everybody wins, and you get a little something to show for it in return. Um, so yeah, we have comments in here from Chaz, uh, Chaz Bogan asking uh, where you can order the hats. They will be on the website once we get them up, uh, gethomebeforedark.com. And then uh, CK, our buddy at Terminus Legion, who's happy enough to organize the poker tournament yeah, yesterday. Yeah. We had a blast yesterday. Yeah, you, you repping the repping the. Yeah, um, we got a couple of things, I guess, to get still, out. Of yeah, right we got now, more. But, we mm-hmm. got, yeah, Joe, just come back next week. <laughs> 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 we haven't talked about ourselves enough. <laughs> um, yeah, so CK, Chaz, both asking about the hat, or CK asking or saying he loves the hat. Uh, we have a comment in here, and I wanted to get to it because I did submit us to this. Um, De Burton Boise had put his uh, comment in there. Said, "Put this shit on Acast." Yeah, what's Acast? I've never know. seen Acast. He did ask about Spotify. The thing about Spotify, I do want to say, Spotify has a very. I don't use it personally, so I didn't know a whole lot about it uh, going in. I'm a huge Google Play Music guy, but which we are on. We are on. Yes, we're on every single podcast platform that is not uh, exclusive and invite and application. Uh, necessary. So Spotify has, I don't know, no sports, I don't think, on there. Yeah, it's very little. Yeah, I mean, I, I looked whenever... So I submitted us to, to Spotify. So I'll let you guys know as soon as I hear from them or if, you know, silence happens for, I don't know, for the for <laughs> next few months, I'll let you know. 
Yeah. But I, I can't see us moving to to Spotify at this moment, just because. I mean, there's well, nothing on there but lifestyle and music, and I think plus maybe the ne- some food. the negotiations have got a little tense with them. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I think that they're is trying to put us on that Taylor Swift budget. We ain't about it. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, Tay Tay's back on there now. Did you know ooh, that Tay Tay Bengura, who used to play for uh, Celtic. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I know that no. guy. Anyway, that's what the kids are calling. Tell us what Do with the sweet. Ooh, speaking of dress. kids, soccer in the streets, great organization. Which soccer in the streets was part of the tournament. <laughs> that was just a seamless segue. I cannot <laughs> believe that. I don't. Um, I don't know how advertisers aren't knocking down our doors, <laughs> <I know. laughs> asking us, asking us to read their uh, advertisements. Adver- their ad- advertisements. I'm sorry, ad- adverts. Adverts. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Oh. They don't say advertisements anymore. They just say adverts. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you guys haven't gone and looked at it or listened to it, we did record out at uh, Second Self Beer yesterday with Terminus Legion and, and uh, Soccer in the Streets. And I guess Second Self was involved too because they were hosting the event. And it was all to benefit Soccer in the Streets, and Most, the mostly, mostly for them children. And somehow, we didn't win any of the first three raffles. And then the last raffle, we win three out of five. Brought down the house. <laughs> <laughs> and we ended up with the signed Kevin Kratz jersey, which will be going to either Aaron Brothers or Michaels or something like that to be put in professionally into a shadow box because I don't want to mess with it. And it's going to be going up in a in a few weeks, hopefully not too not too long. Yeah. Um, Kratz Krieg! <laughs> we do have the Kratz Krieg in the, in the studio. <laughs> and we got a sweet soccer in the streets scarf in the front. And yeah. Yeah, great event, and something that you guys, I mean, we've talked about it a lot, and one of the things we didn't talk about before, which bears mentioning, is these events, we'll try to keep being a part of these whenever we can, but they they aren't Terminus Legion exclusive, they're to benefit soccer in the streets, and uh, it's a great organization, be sure to check out both of them on Twitter, or wherever you can find them. Okay, now it's your turn. For oh, the no. next 45 minutes, oh, no. it's all on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, seriously, no. Thanks this, for this. Has got to be weird for you. I mean, you're actually doing a podcast, which is, <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Um, I know it's not really your well, forte. I, I, you're kind yeah. of, <laughs> I do it for friends, you know, yeah. on request. I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy to come on and join. No, we have a, we have seriously, an actual, thank you guys for bringing me on. Yeah, so, we have an actual dad right here. You record right. an H dad, mm-hmm. exactly. Yep. Yeah, so talk yep. a little bit about that. It's basically yeah. the same, yeah. So, yeah, I'll just plug it right now so um myself and sam jones is another writer for dirty south soccer i've never heard of that guy huh interesting we uh, never, never had him on, him on twitter the show. he's uh, yeah. lots of all, lots of all caps uh on, yeah. on twitter it's hard to find him because his name <laughs> changes every oh, single yeah, day that, is, that yeah. is true that is true um, he's not a lorena west fan by any chance right uh, i don't need that on my time really he, he can't know, be that big of a fan since we are such big fans of Atlanta United. We'd have obviously heard of him probably before. <laughs> probably you've probably hitched your ride to a terrible <laughs> character <laughs> to be putting out any sort of content with. But continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a wild ride. So we Sam and I reported from the press box uh, for a lot of the year last year, and we kind of just wanted to bring this. You know, there's tons of podcasts out there, but yeah. we wanted to bring something different uh, in a highly distributed audio discussion that could happen as soon as possible after the game. So right. uh, he and mm-hmm. I will be going live basically from the press box um, after we go down and interview players. And so That's it's just, a, it's just a time for people to, you know, turn, a, uh, turn us on on Facebook live on their way home. If you're on Marta, if you're in the car, um, if you're having a few extra beers afterward in the parking lot um, and just, you know, <laughs> after react, work. Yeah. Yeah. Interact with those. Nice. Or, if you didn't, or if you didn't go to the game, you know, just, just, Boot, boot up Facebook Live and, and come chat with us, and we'll talk about the game and everything that happened during so and afterwards. Will you like do it in the press box, or will you be in like at the Gulch or something where people could come we, talk to you guys? Are, so primarily, we're thinking right now it'll be in the press box. Obviously, we have not done one yet, so okay. um, it may be a wor- it may be in flux. I mean, if people want us to do it somewhere else, that may be possible. Um, the mm-hmm. problem is that Sam has to write his Sam is will, files the the game reports, and so that's the thing that needs to go out immediately after the game. So he has to come uh, up to back to the press box and finish and file his report. And then we just want to go on immediately after that. So that's why we picked the press box as the venue to do it. Because as soon that's as we can cool get on. Spot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully that's we really want to get great. like the field backdrop and yeah, you know, everything. So absolutely. are you guys allowed um, to at least be excited after the game in the press box? Are you allowed uh, yeah, to sure, smile sure, whenever sure. you report Oh, yeah. Yes. I mean, they warn us not to, <laughs> we get the warning not to cheer in the press box every game. So yeah. it's, it's, it's no big thing. Yeah. So, wow. yeah. Yeah. It should be fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm 
we, you guys uploaded the first episode last week, right? Yeah, I think yeah, last the week. Teaser we, yeah, yeah, for, we just wanted to kind of yeah. introduce it. Um, Did anybody else? So anybody else who subscribed to that? Uh, I had Mark Marin's WTF artwork come up because the first episode had WTF in the title. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So the, the artwork. <laughs> had, oh, I didn't, had, I didn't, I didn't see that. That's yeah, interesting. That's funny. I don't know if I was the only one. I don't know if you huh. guys are subscribed to that, but yeah, I came up and uh, overtook it. We had uh, just one more tidbit from yesterday from the poker tournament. Again, we recorded yesterday. There's a YouTube uh, video. There's also a uh, podcast up on all the podcasters, not Spotify. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> CK said they raised over $400 for soccer in the streets yesterday. And as Austin said, they raised 5000 last year. So let's make sure it's more this year. Yeah. Oh, we're going to. Yeah, we'll help them crush, crush that. It. I, know, I know they'll crush it on their own. We'll help. Increase it a little bit, just just the tiniest bit. And he said the goal is hopefully we can get some of these hats and throw them in. They do raffles and stuff at these events too. Even if you're not playing poker, come out have a beer and uh, participate in some of the raffles. Maybe you might see a plastic hat or two pop up in some of those at some yep. point. And he said, <laughs> he, said <laughs> oh, he said they're planning an inner uh, supporters group poker tournament. Stay tuned. Yeah, it should be fun. All right. So we we're gonna get the bad so, news out of the way. Signing off. Um, you can find all of us on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times. Good uh, good times. So before I know we got a, a lot of stuff to talk about, but before we get into the meat of it, I just wanted to something we talked about last week with Walks leaving. You guys saw that he scored a goal this past week. Yeah, right? it was awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So did he end up playing right back? I yeah. could, I, I couldn't find the sc- the the lineup sheet whenever I looked yeah. on Sat it was Saturday, right? Yeah, yeah. He uh he played right back and from what I read he was like he was winning the man of the match poll that their that their fan Good. group does. Good for him, man. Um I didn't see any of the game other than the goal. Yeah, uh, but apparently he played. I mean, he must have played well um, throughout, other than other than just scoring. So, is, but is yeah, Pompey, he was right back. Is Pompey close to promotion? <laughs> they're fighting. They're fighting relegation. They they just got promoted last year, so they're they went up from League Two to League One, and yeah. so they're just trying to fight. I think it was their first points in the new year. So yeah, they're they're trying to turn it around. So yeah, yeah. hopefully he'll be a boost for them. It's crazy. We talked about it last week or maybe two weeks ago. Man, they were in the top flight for so long. Yeah, yeah and then yeah. Harry Nett, Red Nett ran him into the ground. Yep. I, I'd like to think so. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure it was an incompetent owners group. But so, have you guys ever Googled uh, Mister Portsmouth Football Club? No. And see, no. he is the biggest. I mean, he is more of a hardcore supporter than Jay Riddle. I mean, it's he's got tattoos. Shots on his fired. Body. Shots fired. <laughs> so, so I went to school at Portsmouth, and uh, he is he is well known throughout the uh, Portsmouth landscape. You're saying Portsmouth wrong. <laughs> <laughs> in Middlesboro. <laughs> well, I, I'm from Birmingham, apparently. Yeah, so. and, and Leicester. They won the championship. But... <laughs> it just sounds like hair lice. It's kind of good. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, isn't that? Yeah, that's pretty good. In Norwich and West Bromwich, Albion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's with the silent W? I don't get it. In the I... middle of words, silent W. Oh, we cut things all, out all the time. Yeah. It's like tease. We don't say tweeze. Tease every now and then. Is it something that evolved, like just out of laziness, or is oh, it... I'm pretty sure it's laziness. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. No, it's complete sophistication. Okay, so <laughs> maybe, maybe we maybe we we'll save aside for the end. Maybe. Yeah, we'll we'll save that. Yeah, that's the... going to be the bulk of the conversation. Yeah, I, think. I mean that's like... the that's the only news we really got this week, right? I mean, what other news did we have? Pretty quiet. Yeah. yeah. Um. So you going down to Nashville? I think no, I'm not. I'm. I have a bachelor party Up the following Nashville. weekend, so it's like had had to had to balance the schedule out a little bit. So, yeah. um, not going to be able to make it. I'm really hoping uh, Nashville streams it through their club, like YouTube. That's account been or the whatever. thing that everybody's wondering is where yeah. or if it's going to be well, streamed that was, anywhere. That was standard last year. Is all the USL clubs would stream it through their website, right? Well, w- or is it all uh, going to be yeah, done through yeah. YouTube? Maybe so. Uh, so I know the the like USL clubs will stream like regular season matches on their yeah. YouTube, on their YouTube uh, accounts. And it, last year, the only reason it was getting streamed was because it was the teams that we were playing were streaming it. So like when we played Chattanooga, they they were in charge of the stream. When we went up to Charleston, you know, they were in charge of the stream, which was absolutely terrible. I think their like servers got overloaded or something. But um, I, so I think it's up to Nashville. But I would be pretty surprised if they didn't. I mean, it's their first ever kind of match, yeah, there's match no in way their that club history yeah, they're exactly. going to put it it's out there for people so yeah. I agree. yeah but i haven't heard anything yet but they, i mean they did just announce can that you check can you while we're sitting sure. here i mean just check the nashville yeah. website i'm sure that they'll have something post i mean it's four yeah. days away they've yeah. got to have something in there i mean at this point. i mean 
Atlanta United's a pretty big draw. B in sports just picked up the Charleston Champions Cup. I know I did not know the name of that tournament. It's but, uh, um, Carolina Challenge Cup. Carolina Challenge yeah. Cup. There yeah. we go. Um, yeah, B in sports just picked that up. So they'll be streaming it. Um, all those games that we play. So you can, if if you get B in sports, you can stream it there. And I'm sure there will be other streams as long as it's on, in one place. People will. Absolutely. Re- reproduce Absolutely. it and put it out there. So. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. it's one of those games that it's so close. It's easy for us to get there as a fan base, yeah. too. I mean, four yeah. hours. I wanted to go, for sure. Yeah. I think that's awesome they got Nissan signed on as the shirt sponsor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they're headquartered up there now. Yeah, yeah. Nissan's really pretty entrenched in a lot of the a lot of the stuff up there. Yeah, yeah. it's it's cool. I mean, they have a huge, uh, huge headquarters up there, and yeah, mm-hmm. they really have. Yeah. I don't... It's nice because the, the, the logo goes really well with their kit. Yeah, it does. So it nice looks nice. White. Whereas, you know, Man United have that god awful Chevrolet sign, which just looks <laughs> terrible. <laughs> I, so I, bad. I really do love that their colors for the city, at least in terms of soccer and hockey, are the same. I think it's cool that I think they're a, not really deviating. I think it's a strategic thing that a lot of teams do. Like that's why that's pretty much why right. Lenny and I was black and red is because the Falcons are black and red, yeah. and it's they're both Arthur Blank companies. So that you know when they don't have to redesign things, and you don't yeah, want to go with that. Like I know uh, that's why the hashtag brand the Hawks got new the Atlanta Hawks got new uniforms when the Thrashers came to town. I want to say oh. because they wanted the colors to match. They you know they wanted Phillips Arena to be yeah, color yeah. schemed in a certain way. So I'm right, a sucker right. for yellow to begin with. So um, I like I, I love like. A, a yeah. yellow trim or yeah, like a absolutely or gold, you know, absolutely. something like that. <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm not. I'm not finding anything on the stream yet. I think we'll just have to stay tuned to see whenever they post that because right now their little article about the game is all about ticket sales. It's not really about the stream yet. I, yeah. I'll, I'll look. If but worse it, comes to worse, someone will be periscoping it from in the sta- from inside the stadium. So I mean, there will right. be some way to follow what's yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know the. the Potato quality might happen, but right, um, you know. right, absolutely. Well, so to that point, just follow along with anybody online. Like you're saying, <laughs> there's going to be plenty of footage there, but there's no way it's too big of a game, even with it being a preseason game for that club, even for Atlanta. There's going to be enough support there that something's going to be happening. I mean, it was almost impossible to find tickets whenever they went on sale. Yeah. I mean, they all sold out almost immediately. So we, we broke Ticketmaster. It seemed like that day. Because you call like you text me and you were like, "The uh, standing room only seats are available. Just get in there right now and try and buy one." And I couldn't even bring my dollar amount low enough to even yeah. get there. It was broken. Huh. Yeah, wow. Wow. yeah. Like the minimum value you couldn't bring down to zero. Minimum value started at twenty five, so it was nothing. Like standing I think the room standing was room was twenty. We've yeah. just been starved, so any like little oh, yeah. piece of information oh, yeah. is like, "Oh my god, yeah, I want it. Give it to me now." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> morsels, vittles, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. <laughs> We we wanted it. Speaking of which, Brittany S says we will break the stream. That's that's for sure. Mm-hmm. I think I, I feel like we broke the stream during the Open Cup last year. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The um, yeah. Charleston yeah. battery Charleston game. battery game was up in Kennesaw. Yeah, that was so annoying. And that was yeah, the one well, that was on a huge. Was that the one that was in the huge, huge delay? delay? Yeah, yeah. Didn't it start till it was like ten called, o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. It was called like live dot stream, which or like stream dot live yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. It's like a Charleston based company, and they were just not prepared. Yeah, not no, good. and there was they like, had they tried to no do like replays. eight different camera angles, and then they had to like get rid of that and condense it down to like two, so that yep. people could watch without. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like when Miles Robinson scored that uh, first own goal. I was like. Maybe it was just the stream. Was broken. <laughs> yeah. Is this real life? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that definitely did. Not. Yeah. Hopefully we, hopefully we don't yeah. see that again uh, to start in Nashville. couple so, things. Speaking of starting in Nashville. Yeah. Let, let's get to that first. We will get back because there's some news, I guess, about Vialba. Um, right. But well, positive somewhat news. news. He's, I mean, he's training, right? Well, they've seen him out there. They've seen him in Orlando, not necessarily right. training. He's walking around. Uh, whether or not that means he's actually in full capacity well, to train, I haven't seen. Our buddy PK says Vialba is injured, but back at training today. At training, I think he was but watching not training. training. Yeah, yeah he's I think at he was, training. He's yeah. not training. Well, if the injury I, not was technically wrong, if but, the injury right. was that bad, he'd probably still be at home, right? Or be in the right. in the locker room, or being with the trainers. Yeah, I, I wouldn't travel to Orlando if I didn't have to. That's right. true, man. But they they probably <laughs> brought him down there. Anyway, even if he doesn't train any anymore, just to keep that sort of chemistry preparation between sense. the team. Do you yeah. think you think the digital team had it out with him? Like, what are you doing posting an Instagram story oh, that- of yourself <laughs> back in Atlanta <laughs> when everybody knows that we're back, we're down in Orlando? Oh, right yeah. did he? I, I bet, didn't it, even I see bet that. it was 
Darren that's, Eels. Uh, that happened last, <laughs> was it last Monday? Um, yeah, it was something, it was about a week ago. It was sometime last week, but that's, how, that, that's what broke is everybody just started saying, like, what are they, they start tweeting at Darren Eels, they start tweeting at somebody like, say something, say something, uh, what's uh, happening, what is going on with Tito right now, asking Doug Robertson, that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. They were asking, what's going on? What's going on? What, what, what? And then finally he came out with that thing and he said, what did he say? It was a abductor, abductor, in, in, abductor. Ab, Ab, abductor. Okay, so it's abductor. So is that that's in the stomach? I would assume. No, I an abductor. Does anyone know? No, I think that's it's. <laughs> I have uh, no live idea. Chat. What's an abductor? It's in your it's in your thighs. Oh, is that, okay. Like the groin you know, area. Yeah. So Ooh, a person you know that abducts machines. another person. I, that's definitely <laughs> it. Tim. I think he's an abductor. <laughs> He's definitely an abductor. What, what a terrible name. What, what an absolutely <laughs> terrible name for a muscle uh, to call it an abductor. Like, we're sitting here putting the right inflection on it. It's like, it sounds normal. No, it sounds normal in normal sports medicine talk. No, an, an abductor. I just searched abductor and it came up with um, John Wayne Gacy. So that's great. <laughs> 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 that's what I would so I, I love all these groin muscle pictures that I'm seeing on your screen right now. They're uh, anatomically correct. So the adductor uh, that's just my desktop. Ad, <laughs> the adductor is in the front. Abductor. You didn't have to put your face in the picture. I don't know. <laughs> We're trying to figure it out. You wanna... Don't tell everyone. Oh, Jeez. okay. Uh, well, PK is a doctor, so uh, I guess we'll leave it to him. Well, he, he says, says it, he said it. It's well, a, so he that, claims. He said so he... <laughs> everyone's a doctor on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> oh, he's a better doctor than he is a Fortnite player. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially i think it's the three muscles at the top of your leg and the adductor is toward the body abductor is away from the center so it's the outside of your thigh essentially i think that connects your hip if, if that's not right okay uh, if i'm if i'm incorrect on that tell me but nonetheless good. Good he job, has everybody. some sort of an injury that he's nursing Do whether you know, or not it's severe enough to keep him from getting play time saturday is so yet to be shockingly enough i was playing fifa 18 <gasps> And I was playing Land United career mode. On Vialba, PS4? Yep. Vialba got injured, out for two months. And then I look at my phone, and I'm like, oh, Vialba's got injured. God, like a Mac Wait, it's did like my a Mac phone Christopher sync up book. with my game? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> did I make this happen? <laughs> oh, dear God. I think I think we might have blown out the mic there. With my coffee. First time. With my First coffee? time tonight? No, oh. I think just laughing. Oh, gotcha. it's good stuff. It's it's the best way to do it. So, so yeah. What do you? Nashville. So if Vialba doesn't start, if Vialba doesn't, oh, we're just going to stick with this. Okay, I think he's got we'll, plenty of time. We'll to, get, we'll yeah, get back. I, hope, I hope we don't start him. No reason to risk it. No. You're reason. talking about, I, I you're talking about Saturday? Yes. Oh God, no. He's not Amen, playing. Dude. Amen. I don't think he'll even play on Saturday. Yeah, it's we have plenty of other guys to go stick into that spot. Do you think Romario Williams can play one of those two wingers? Mm. I think he's fleet enough of foot, right? He probably could, but I don't think that they would do that just because I think they probably want to get him settled in like a specific position and just kind of, you know, they have right. Gressel can play out there. Carlton pl can play out there. Vas Vasquez, Vasquez yeah. has more experience playing out there than Romario. So yeah, I think Gressel's the easy call there. To yeah, put out there. I think so too, man, the way that he just, I, I can't wait to see him on that wing again at some point, even if it's just spelling Tito for the last 20 minutes of the game and putting balls across the, yeah, across the box absolutely. on the ground and absolutely. having a guy like Joseph back there just to, yeah. especially God, I can't I mean, wait. Especially his so first excited. touch on on the on an assist on the wing. I mean, it's just it's an inherent ability of him to turn his body, not even take a look at the inside yeah. of the box to yeah. put the ball right on frame. His, his for, service from wide is yeah. very good. Yeah, and so, yeah. like it's so quick that I think that's what catches defenders out. Absolutely, like you're saying, it, it's funny. It's, talking about Gressel. With Carmona, you know, the absence of Car Carmona now, obviously there's been all this talk about getting a, a defensive midfielder um, in the middle of the field. And I hear so many people talk about how Gressel oh, could, fill that or could fill that role. I just don't see it. Like, anyone who watched him last year, like, don't yeah. you want to see Gressel going forward? Like, right. going, going and not running see at defenders? Shoulder Absolutely, yeah. Not see yeah. Him shoulder, I don't see where uh, the, the defensive midfield talk comes from. Josie off Gressel. the ball? It doesn't suit his yeah. strengths to me. No, I mean, I think it's only because I think he started there at the beginning of the yeah, season. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, but, he did. I mean, he did. I, he is much better going forward, but I just don't want him to be tied back. I, I, yeah, I, I, I would just rather see him play in a role where he has more freedom because I think that's just that would get the best out of him. Agreed. Absolutely. Help his development. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I don't know. 
Because we saw him kind of in a deeper role against what was it, Chicago? He, um, yeah, he played in the middle of uh, in a midfield pairing a couple times. Um, Actually, it was yeah, in, I mean, it was in, the, the first game of the season. Ironically enough, he did it in Carmona's absence against Chicago. Yeah, right? yeah, that, that <laughs> that's been right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he slotted home his first goal. Well, it was an own goal. I think that was on. I can't remember that guy's name. One of the center backs from Chicago. But I thought he was all right that game playing in a in a midfield role in a center midfield role. But I do agree. I'd rather see him more up front. <laughs> Same with Kevin Kratz. I don't think Kevin Kratz fits into that Carmona role either because he's a more of attacking player. We saw him trying to supplement for him Mm -hmm. and not have Lorenowitz there, not have Carmona there. And it was never really great combo because he needs to be pushed forward. Yeah. I'm not convinced anyone knows what Kevin Kratz is good at except for free kicks. Like he's just kind of like the most neutral midfield. Like he's he's like the most neutral player midfielder at the very least. I I, I definitely agree with that. If you're going to, start to narrow in on it it's almost like you have to look at it black and white it's like is he defending yeah. or is he attacking agree. he's definitely he definitely leans more attacking than he does defending i agree so i would put him there i agree free kick the one he put in against new england was yeah dynamite but I, he, yeah I, I agree with you about the attack but i still don't, he's not like a guy who's gonna like unlock a defense with these passes you know he's more yeah. there oh, just no. to provide energy yeah. and kind of just buzz uh, around and, and that's exactly yeah, what up play and be a nuisance mm-hmm. and that's yeah. exactly what we saw him come in as as a sub was mm-hmm. this sort of energy boost to the midfield where there was a bit of sluggishness to the ball moving past midfield. He came in and seemed to push that aggression a little bit more and keep the ball on that end of the pitch, even if it's not, you know, moving laterally like Al Marone or something like that. Yeah. It's at least stopping play from progressing to our side of the field. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So he's just, a, I guess what I meant to say, he's just a well rounded player, but yeah, he's not mm-hmm. like. He's just like a master of all, you know. Yeah. Jack was of Jack Maltrade's yeah, master yeah. of none. That kind, that kind of player. I, I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. I think except so. for the free kicks, he's great free kick. It's funny. So that that game uh, when he scored that free kick, all the Atlanta United staff, like all the all the team staff, they were all all going nuts when he scored it, and they they started calling him Cratzino and stuff. They're like, oh yeah, he scores those in practice <laughs> all the time. It's like I knew he was going to score it. Oh, that's so great. funny. Apparently, he's like amazing at him. It's, wow. Yeah. Well, hopefully, he gets a little bit more play time. I'd like to see him. We got this jersey now. Obviously. That's right. So let me ask you this question. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so we talk a lot about a player coming in and taking Carmona's role by themselves. But do you think that Carmona, his role could be made up of a sort of a Frankenstein of players since he plays a little bit further forward than Lorenowitz? And therefore, maybe doesn't have to have as much discipline as as Lorenowitz was. Bearing in mind, you're probably putting a little bit more pressure on Lorenowitz to do that. But do you think that um, a player like Chris Goslin would then have that sort of opportunity to to start in Carmona's role, just as not to start? I, I yeah, I get, starting eleven. But I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, I'm like the highest on Chris Goslin. I think mm. of of anyone, at least on the Dirty South Soccer staff. Like I, I, I'm, I'm right. I'm right. I there love with you. this guy. I, I thought he, he, was, right. he was he was the best player on the U17 team. Totally agree. Hands in, down. In the uh, yeah, in that in the World Cup, he was he was he impressed me so much. Um, and he's already like he already looks like he's getting more strength. Like he's like getting big. He's getting those like big legs that like you know that soccer players get. You know they come in when they're like teenagers. Joseph they're kind of like Tita. skinny overall. Yeah, yeah. You get that kind get of like ham, the, the big ass. Yeah, yeah. Just get the thick bottom. The lower center of gravity allows you to kind of hold up play more and <clears throat> yeah, withstand withstand the all the activity in the middle of the field. But um, I think that we do need somebody that's going to be like really we need to fill the Laurentowitz role mm-hmm. through the lo- Carmona loss because Nagby's going to play the Carmona role, right? Like he's going to be the guy who's the next to the more defensive player. So we need someone who's going to kind of sit back. I so, have that person for you. Right. He just finished out his contract at Ruben Kazan. Is he this is going Cam- into your Alex Song thing? He is a Cameroonian international, <laughs> former central defensive midfield boss for both Arsenal and for Barcelona. And he is on a free right now. Plays his best football at Barcelona, I thought. <laughs> we just got a lot of allocation money, if I'm not mistaken, today, which we'll get to later. 500000 and if I'm not mistaken, that along with the discretionary team we were given this year and game that we were given this year, I mean, 
I, we got to pay somebody's contract down. Well, first. that's going to be the nine million we pay to this left back kid. I want to get to that too. I think that's. I think that's. <laughs> yeah. it. I think yeah. that's very interesting. I'm w- right there with you on Goslin, though. I did want to mm. get to something in the the tweets. Yeah. From our boy Jay Lafleur, who uh, doesn't he doesn't dip into the the live chat. He says Dan's looking swole as fuck right now. Been hitting the gym. Ooh. He, he was just talking about doing P90X before yeah. the show started. I am swole. <laughs> I, I like to ass. model myself after Lego Batman. <laughs> Got an extra ab. No, he says, uh, yo, Dan been in the gym. He looking strong as fuck. How Dan gets so swole. No, I'm swearing, want- <laughs> I'm swearing three t-shirts. <laughs> oh, God. that was always it's, a- the, it's the vertical stripes. <laughs> it's the, it's yeah. I mean, I look fat as fuck. I just can't <laughs> go. I'm not going to lie. I, wa- I was look- watching the YouTube. It's like, that's why when we were deciding where people were going to go, I was like, I want to be as far away from you. We'll put Dan over there. Put Dan uh, closer. Kelly Francis, who joined us yesterday from Miles of the South, she's in the chat saying Tito has already paid down. Oh. Is that right? It's not something the club has to announce, so they haven't announced it, but it's... Yes, we know he's getting paid down. Yeah. We knew something... I can tell you that yeah. unofficially. He's we, getting paid down. Yeah. <laughs> we knew something was going to happen. I, we don't get the LA Galaxy treatment where we can have four DPs on a team. Until somebody comes Yet. and picks up Yellow Van Dam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The shit. My brain just broke. Oh, well. I'm going to awkwardly stare at you. You're talking, talking about, you're talking about Goslin. We were, oh, God. Yeah. Um, Goslin. Man, I, I, I want to see we're him. Talking about allocation money? I want to see, I want to see Goslin and Carlton maybe for like two months in Gwinnett mm-hmm, and then him, sure. them to get summoned onto the bench. Yeah. I, I freaking, I love. I love Goslin. I the way he bossed that midfield, c- controlled the pace. He's he is the perfect Carmona replacement. He's yeah. a little smaller. He's probably what three or four inches shorter than Carmona is. Yeah, but if he can get a little more stout, yeah, and like, he, yeah. I, like in Golo Conte, like be a little exactly. little guy, low center of gravity, strong, and be able to just control that midfield. He's got that specific skill of kind of knowing where everyone is around him and just be able to kind of just recycle possession. You know, he doesn't play yeah, anything perfect. fancy, but it's just it's exactly what we need from that. Role. And that 40 yard free kick that hit the crossbar. Oh, yeah, God, I would have. <laughs> I'd have. Uh, yeah, I, w- I will say he's not the most interesting guy on that team. Uh, Tim Weah, his dad, who just he got sworn in as president of Liberia, yeah. George Weah, <laughs> former soccer great. Whoa. From Liberia. <laughs> so yeah. you think we see Goslin on uh, Saturday? I think we'll see just about everybody on Saturday. I do too. Yeah. Everybody. Pretty much everyone who's in camp. I would. I don't, many, I don't, do, you, do we know how many players are actually there? I don't know the the actual number. Well, I don't think. I don't get, think the rookies will play. We did get another cryptic tweet today from Darren Eels. Oh, uh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. 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 There's that to talk about. <laughs> and I, then, <laughs> sad face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think there's a they're tied a little bit. I I I think he was buttering us up, getting us ready for the the disappointing news of the day. Yeah. yeah. That, that's. <clears throat> I do Just love his. Uh, but I now I can't trust his cryptic traits because now I, I'll see one. And I'm like, well, is this a bad thing now? Like he's he's destroyed yeah. my trust. <laughs> well, we were terrified the in the Dirty South Soccer Writers Room. We were terrified that the announce this announcement was going to be for like for the gam that they received or for the tam that the money that they received for making this trade. We're like, <laughs> please do not do this. <laughs> yeah, please do not do this. We like. <laughs> I was yeah. And I was worried that, about it. We got like, in touch with someone from the lady. club. They're like, no, we would never do that. Like, okay, three hundred thousand dollars. That would just be yeah. a huge troll to everyone. Here. <laughs> oh, Alex Brotherton asking, what has he missed? The world. Yeah, you've just missed, go back. You've missed the just world. Just start over. <laughs> start over. Just start putting ill-timed comments in the live chat. Yeah, go back to the beginning. <laughs> They'll be forty minutes behind or whatever we are now. So rookie, you don't think rookies? You don't think we'll see Shannon or? Oh, wild. Maybe later in the preseason. Um, I just feel like we have so many players there. I don't know if we That's could even, point. We, I don't even know if we could actually have the num. We have too many numbers to unless fill through they have, every single player in one game. I think unless they mm-hmm. have a legitimate possibility of starting or being already incorporated in some way. I, I don't think that Oliver Shannon doesn't have a chance of starting. I obviously hope he does for obvious reasons. So, <laughs> yeah. um, but yeah, I think it, it's much more likely to see Carlton or Goslin play away where yeah. they already have some familiarity with the team. And I think Tata wants to incorporate them a little bit more. So, Agreed. yeah. And I, I I would add, I think if you, we do see any of the rookies uh, in that first game, I think it's a very good sign for them um, as being contributors for the first team this season. Right. Absolutely. Right. Is Vasquez still nursing the injury? I don't think so. He's back in training from what um, I understand, right? I have no idea. 
I didn't even know he was hurt, to be honest. So he t- I, he either tore he out a partial tear in his the, hamstring yeah, last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, yeah, he's back. He's okay, back. Great. Yep. I, I see big things from him this year. I hope so. I think yeah, that, I hope so, too. I hope he continues to develop. Yeah, and stops getting I red cards. I think it's going to be a USL. I think he's going to be USL. You think he's going to be USL, really? Yeah. You don't. We need two forwards behind Joseph. It's not like we can... Right, you're gonna. You, uh, he's versatile enough to play on the right. right? Yeah, but I mean, I so, think, yeah, I think he's got the he's got the experience from playing last. I mean, he was getting game times last year, and he's sure. 18, built like a grown ass man, <laughs> yeah. and he's only he gonna is. get bigger. I mean, his, his touch was not bad. For, I just, for I just wait. Too. He's gonna get more time I'm playing USL there. than he is sitting on the bench. Might be more beneficial for him to be yeah. playing USL. I think I it's agree, better I, for I a lot that. of these guys. Like, yeah. Yeah. the yeah. fact that they were going. About the time of not playing at all. Our it's, squad is just so young that like you could make the case for so many players that like, oh right. man, it'd be great for them to be playing every day in USL, but not all of them can play well, you're also, all the time I in mean, USL. That's the other thing too, is it's like you're taking risks based off of not really taking risks. These guys are obviously talented, but you only have these bits and pieces of playtime to judge whether or not they're the right fit for the right scenario, whether oh, yeah. it's the mm-hmm. U18s or mm-hmm. whatever. Um with them playing week in and week out with Atlanta United 2, you have a real live calculation of what they're capable of, how, you yep. know, who's peaking, fresh. who's falling at, during that point of the season to make sure yeah. that that substitution is really what Atlanta United needs at that moment rather than, oh, this guy had a great game against India a month ago. Right. Let's throw him in because he had this great through ball up the middle. <laughs> you, you know? I yeah, mean, yeah. Why are you talking about Carlton like that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, yeah, I you, you, it doesn't detract. From, I mean, I think, like I said, I think they're all great players, but you really do just have these momentary snapshots, snapshots of them as a player. And whenever they're playing... Or, or they're yeah. not playing. Week. You know, they, yeah, you know exactly. we send them on loan and they sit on the bench. Yeah. And we've got so much more control over them now. <laughs> exactly. I mean, Noah, we, Noah Byers in the live chat is just delivering the, the fire for the Orlando fans, saying, <laughs> y'all wonder if they have st- <laughs> safe standing at the Orlando jails for their supporters. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I don't think they stand. Ooh. No, I guess they do have safe standing, right? Yeah. And they can't they can't handle having seats like are they yeah. gonna be it's like, no. the, we it's don't like they don't want to stand but they don't want the seats so they're just gonna rip up benches unless that's just at our stadiums i forget it's, it's hard um, to gauge a couple more things Brittany asked asking uh, saying barco i imagine we're gonna see him play some i would be very sad if we don't yeah <laughs> yeah i would be very sad i would say we probably get a yeah. solid 35 yeah, we'll 45 mm-hmm. minutes from him at least mm-hmm. get him acclimated and then Jay Riddle says he demands Joe Patrick deliver more behind the scenes stories in HDAD format on this show. Uh, Giving know. away all the good content. I got got to save something for the regular show, right? Yeah, that's true. We're not gonna we're not gonna completely out you. No, <laughs> no, no I, I, <laughs> don't want to leave I, you I, without. I'm just kidding. I'll share stories. Um, <laughs> there's a there's a there's a soft serve ice cream machine up there. I saw it explode on a Lenny United staffer one time. It was pretty fun. There, there's a little story for you, Jay. <laughs> exploding ice cream. Don't contribute to his wants and <laughs> desires. He gets too much attention. Kevin, Kevin's just too salty right now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We're completely losing track of, of where uh, I am. Um, so yeah. Uh, so Nashville, I think we'll see a lot. Yeah, we can go ahead and do score predictions. Get everybody rolling them in um, throughout the rest of the show. Yeah, score prediction sounds great. Um, I will say seven to one Atlanta oh, United. Um, can, so, can, can, can't keep a clean sheet in the second half. <laughs> and I think we ship him out. Uh, I'll say, I'll wait, Guzan or can Guzman, first of all. Yeah. And uh, I thought I you think... would stop doing that. Shit. <laughs> it's a new season, dude. He's got to prove himself again. Oh, there true. are no that's passes good point. Yeah. for this team. Guy. Yeah, you know exactly. all about the Guzman. Do you know anything about the Guzman thing? No. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Okay. Score predictions first. Uh, four one Atlanta. I'm just gonna go a shitty two one Atlanta. What? Um, I'll go six uh, one. Okay, I like it. Playing, Kelly, the, playing the Price is Right game against yeah. Tanner. <laughs> 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 Kelly Francis saying 5-1 Atlanta. Chaz, uh, I'm just tempering Chaz my expectations. <laughs> okay, yeah. That's probably the, probably the smart 
Wait, four go. one, uh, Patrick Keenum, five one, Brittany S three zero, Noah Byers four one, Rob Swick six one, Alex Brotherton four two. Do we want to try and Jimmy keep Vance, track four, of nothing. this? This is just, <laughs> this is too <laughs> much. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Jay has put in four different score predictions yeah. <laughs> at this point. Jimmy Vance four nothing. Uh, Jay Huthersaw four. Granted, two. I don't know if it's his count on pizza slices that he's eating tonight or if it's score <laughs> predictions at this point. <laughs> Brought worse pizza. pizza. You're, you're just throwing shit. The thing is, the, the thing in these games is when you bring on, you know, a fresh batch of players after 40 right. minutes, they don't want to score. You know, it's like exactly. they, they, have, they have, they're not in a nil nil game. You know, right. it's not them, so they want to get on and, and make a mark. So, Absolutely. what was what did we beat uh, Chattanooga by last year? Does anybody remember that's four nil? I think it was four nil. And uh, that's when they brought yeah. out the uh, away kits, right? That's yeah. whenever Carlton yep. Carlton played that game, right? Yeah, did he yeah. score? He scored? Yeah, he scored. Yeah, yeah he scored they, they gave him a beer shower. Yeah. Okay, so Guzman. So we had this whole deal last year before Brad Guzan came. Mm-hmm. And we were talking up Alec Kent because I thought we were he was doing great. And every time we brought up Guzan, Kevin would call him Guzman or Guzman. <laughs> and it just stuck and it stuck and it stuck and it stuck. And Eric Quintana, he came over and recorded with us. <laughs> But before he came over and recorded with us, he just so happened to be uh, a couple days prior. He was in the press, uh, not in the press box, but in the press conference, and he was in the uh, the Spanish language portion with T- uh, with Tata. Mm-hmm. And Brad Guzan's coming, and he says, "What do you think, or when are we, what, what do we expect whenever we see Guzman <laughs> coming to the team?" <laughs> And I think, I think Tata laughed at him, maybe give him a little shit about it. But not just that. It ended up in the ether somehow. And Brad Guzan, whenever he made his way back over to the States, there was a video of oh, his, limo, right. his limo driver <laughs> at the airport had a sign. It said Guzman. On Guzman? It. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that's great. I would, I would say that you're partial, wow. at least partially responsible for that. Yeah. Putting, putting that out there. <laughs> it's part sure. of the uh, Mandela effect. It's... Yeah, right. It was when I was growing up, it was Gooseman, right? It, yeah. It's the two universes kind of. It's like butterfly effect. It's like the Berenstein Bears or the Berenstain Bears. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, go Google it. It's fascinating. Is it though? The Mandela effect is very fascinating. The Berenstein Bear books? No. It, it, how did you spell <laughs> them? How, how, how did you spell it? Is oh, it I, only, I only learned about them coming to America. E I N or A I N? Do you remember it being? I have no idea. It was Berenstein whenever apparently, according to everything you ever see, it says Berenstain Bears. It's total bullshit. It's mm. there's some huge theory about parallel universes colliding and I can't remember how I spell my name half the time, <laughs> much less Berenstein Bears. It's the underscore A R C one T C T. Yes. Nailed it. I got it. I okay. love you so much. I got it. <laughs> uh so to get this show back on the road here, uh, in the live chat, there were some questions about what jersey Dan was sporting tonight, which is also a great segue into our next topic, which God. was announced today, that Assad was officially, I guess his rights at, in the MLS were traded or sold to um, DC United for 500000 in allocation money. Mm-hmm. Thoughts? I'm glad he's got somewhere to go. I'm not. I mean, I'm not mad at him at yeah. all. I, yeah. I I wish him the best, obviously, and I'm not gonna boo him whenever he gets announced in the first game or anything like that mm. here. And mm. I mean, <laughs> if he scores a goal, maybe. I, I guess it depends on what part of the story you buy into, because I think I buy into your version of the story, which tends to I, I don't know. It lends itself to that he asked for too much money. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Yeah, too much money for Atlanta United to afford, but other teams can afford. And I do not begrudge right. him for trying to get a no. market rate for his services. You know, I, I, I so he he is going to be a DP at. He, I, DC. I'm, I'm assuming he is. Who, yeah. who are their DPs yeah. right now? Or Luciano Costa? Or, or Luciano Costa, and then Paul Ariola are there too? Yeah, and Tri- I don't triple A threat, and I don't think they have another one. So I think no. they would have space for him. Um, yeah, I, I mean. I honestly, I when this news broke today, everyone kind of you know did the whole like ah, Assad, you know. Right. I was not that like moved by it. I mean, like basically for me, the kind of the the last nail in the coffin was when Tata spoke had when that video came out. Yeah. Tata speaking yeah. about him, kind of laying yeah. out the situation. To me, that was just that was the end. You know, well, I, I grieved at that point, and I never. Well, the other thing was, it was almost. I don't know if it was if that was before or after the Barco signing, but 
Yeah, it was. I think it was. It was it's after. It was after, right? It was after. It was after. And but, so for me, it was like once we picked up Barco, we knew he would be starting over Assad most likely, exactly. if not immediately yeah. at some point. Um, so for me, that transition had already begun at that point anyway. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah. So it's it's like having the Escobar versus Walks debate at that point, where we had gotten Escobar, Walks wasn't going to be competing for a starting position, and everything else. It thought the same thing was going to be happening with Barco and Assad. It it seemed like a done deal anyway, and that he wasn't going to be coming back. If anything, it sucks that we don't have that player that we can rely on to plug in. But I also wouldn't expect him to sit idly by hoping for the opportunity to come up for Almiron to get traded or right, something like right, that, just for right. him to get to play on a team that he played the entire first season any more than I would for walks who mm-hmm. obviously I wish the best for him. It sucks because I loved him as a player and on this team, but then you see him scoring a goal. I think it's a little bit more direct with, Assad, because we're going to be competing against him, especially considering last season, whenever we give Three up nine, times this nine year. points so, to yeah. DCU, and we don't want to do that again for yeah. obvious reasons. But it's like I was telling Joe before, we can easily draw a red card out of him now. So <laughs> that's true. we know exactly what pushes <laughs> yeah. his buttons yeah. now. Yeah, that's that's it's, all of our most of our teams speak Spanish. So well, we also have defenders that have practiced and played against him a lot. I mean, I think that also helps a lot where especially well i guess it's a little bit different because he wouldn't be playing necessarily against guards though because they'd be on opposite yeah. sides but still even if it's parker shifting over on the right side to lend support as he's coming up the wing or whatever it may be you have right. players that have played against him a good bit and practiced Thanks. with him to know how he plays and how he thinks and how he moves on the pitch which right. except for escobar true he's going to be on the right 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 but yeah. at that point like i said if Parkhurst is having to yeah, shift yeah. over to provide support, or if it's Gressel or Vialba, whoever's in the mid, or even Lorenowitz shifting over to help well, give us support. I think there's a enough- Carter still has the mind meld over him. So <laughs> he's just going to automatically <laughs> negate him anyway. That's, it, that's right. That's it. If anything, for me, t- the, the, the news was positive today because we're getting 300000 in allocation money for this year and then 200000 next year for a player that we paid. 150,000 for in salary over the course of his time here. So we're a net positive in this overall transaction of this player. It's like, mm-hmm. it's like we're getting a uh, 350,000, like as like a clap, right. great, great loan nothing. signing here's yeah. 350,000 in allocation money. You get it's interesting the, the way that works because in England or in Europe, the writer right of first refusal off of a loan is typically just if, if we sign them, we sign them we don't get anything if we pass on yeah, them and you yeah, sign them. Yeah, right. Exa- yeah, exactly. It's silly. Yeah, yeah, that we have the MLS. Right, It's cool. I, I think it's <laughs> yeah, awesome. That it. we're, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm right there with you. No, I think that Assad endeared himself, obviously, to Dan early oh, yeah. on and then to us uh, later on in the season. But Kevin's right. I mean, are you guys talk about What? <laughs> Can you say it again? No, those those words were wrong. Better. I loved him as a player, but I'm just, I guess what I'm saying is I my, my grieving about his his leaving was in the past today. It didn't really affect me right. much. Yeah, no, I'm and right there with you. He's actually on a, he's being loaned to DC from the less off. So yeah, like, it's a loan so, to buy. Okay. So the, he, in he, the purchase he's not a DP for half a million dollars. It's like seven, I think 700,000 It's still or less. something. It's, it's like, a, yeah. I think they're, it, so it's going, they're doing a, it's a loan, but they're going to pay 300,000 for the loan. Like okay. it's like a loan. It's not like a free. Lo- like they're paying three hundred thousand loan and then seven hundred thousand more to buy him afterwards. So it's like a million total transaction. So that adds more credence to the thought of it was a sad Assad's um, negotiations with Atlanta United that it wasn't between us and Velez Sarsfield. It was it was him. Yeah, and there was a there was a article that came out actually before Barco was signed uh, that through Univision that was a long interview with uh with Assad and he talked about um basically his situation and that yeah right. he wasn't coming back to Atlanta United and that the situation was you know he said he had to consider his economic position or right. something like that. Absolutely along yeah. with along with other things, but that that was one of the things he mentioned. Uh and I think he said he's he <laughs> he was he, in that interview he talked about how the team was interested in Barco and he said I th- they decided to go with Barco or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear uh, God. Oh, I am going to miss you, buddy. <laughs> well, it's interesting because if we talk about... He was a very impactful player, and I think that 
a lot of it has shown. I don't know if you saw. I saw it just before we got on here where Teodal Football had put out this statistical comparison of, I think, wingers, left wingers, and he led pretty much every single statistic in MLS. Yeah, and that's probably why he wants to get paid like one. You know, he, that's why he wants to get paid like a top winger. I mean, Tito's on 680, something, something like that. And you know, Yamil was on 150 last year. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's what like that's yeah. what, like what we were paying. We were paying uh, Jacob Peterson more than that, or something. You know, it's like yeah, it was we're, ridiculous we, amount we of money we were Ken, paying him last year. We were paying Kenwin Jones something like five times that, probably. Yeah, yeah. I think so. he was like in the 700 range. CK Lopez with the uh, the most logical trade <laughs> say we should have sold his rights for one win three points you get it <laughs> mm. uh, yeah I, see i Give was us three points i was hoping to get a player out of it like with with um who would you have taken for who so if he's so say but Ru- could we do that could we Russell get a player Knauss. for his I, mls i assume you could it's yeah. a trade oh yeah they're just trading cash but or you can even do you, money, can, but... you can do that in any any league most mm-hmm. of the time player swaps don't happen unless it's something like once in the lifetime like mkhitaryan and Alexis Sanchez, but right. interesting. I didn't, I didn't know if it was different just because it was his rights. Or, I don't uh, know. You say Canals? I'd say Canals. The last time we played them, um, I don't think he he had he had just come into the team, but he basically Carmona'd our team and a little bit more so because he got the goal, I believe, at the end of the game. What, but the uh, the put it away. But uh, yeah, he's a. I thought he was an impressive player. He uh, just broke it up i'm trying to Didn't find... allow us to 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 move around that we were used to doing i thought he'd be a really good fit here yeah i am trying to find it in the live chat i can't remember who put it in there about their attacking three so we talk about acosta, acosta Ariola, and Ariola. And Ariola and like is that it's pretty it's a pretty legitimate that's attack pretty good now i don't so. i don't know if they'll play acosta up top or if they'll play another striker because he's kind of like a right he'd be he the could 10. play up top I think it would be great as like a like a false nine kind of role where he's That's, like where yeah. he's like dropping in and Assad, Assad and no, or no Acosta because he's kind of like the diminutive cut kind of so player. Let me so pose th- let me pose this as a try to poke a hole in Assad's not capability. I think he's a great player, but how much of Assad's awareness or success last year was predicated upon Garza being healthy and playing in tandem with him on that wing. We saw it start to build up a little bit with McCann towards the end of the season, but and, and you saw that chemistry start to happen towards the end. But more times than not, Assad at his best was when Garza was there to back him up and they were playing those balls off of each other and then they'd get those triangle passes on that top corner, which opened up a lot more lanes in the mid. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, does that? I mean, how does that transfer to DC United? Is he I, as stand out by himself without that backup player there to help him play those balls off? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how it's going to work out, but I think that's one of the most intriguing things about the trade. I'm really curious to see how effective he is there as mm-hmm. opposed to the situation he was in here. Because then I think not- he, he's, I think he was probably safe to say he was playing with more talented players in Atlanta. Yeah, so like, how will it work out with him kind of being the star yeah, the, player? Because we definitely saw him drop off whenever Garza was injured. I mean, uh, yeah, a, I mean, he scored his brace. It wasn't a hat trick against LA Galaxy, right? It was brace that he scored. Yes. Uh, uh, it was like two goals to assist or something. It was, yeah, yeah. And the two goals he scored were like in eight minutes apart. So it was uh, anyway, that was without Garza on the pitch. Mm-hmm. So Gar- I mean, Garza and Garza has talked about he Garza talked about how good of a connection he had with Assad. Um, right. Yeah. I talked to him. I talked to Garza um, in training before they left for Orlando. And he specifically yeah. talked about Assad and said, you know, it's really a shame that he's not here because we yeah. knew we, we had a relationship where we knew where each, right. each other were at all times. And that's right. all, that's going to help both players. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I was looking at DC's roster. They've got the two left backs. They have are Taylor Kemp, who is 27 and injured right now. And Chris Corb, 30 year old left back so i mean they're not going to be the kind of guys that are going to be bombing up and down like garza was on the strip yeah the garza strip the garza strip (laughs) (laughs) that's another that's another cap idea oh i love it that's a that's a tifo that's probably too big for a tifo but i I, how excited are you guys to see garza back in the lineup man i i I can't wait yeah (laughs) i was for so long he missed like yeah, Almost he did. all of the Mercedes Benz Stadium I know. era. Of I know. Atlanta, and it was his hip again. Yeah, right? he, lost the, he missed or the no. whole of the he playoffs. Was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, whole, that whole game and extra time. Hey, so did Orlando. <laughs> oh! 
<laughs> Zing. Got him. <laughs> yeah, I think he had, I know he had an ankle injury. I, he had a hip too. Yeah. Uh, and then I think it turned yeah. into an ankle or something. I'm not I'm not sure. Um can't wait to have really a shame back. how injury prone he seems to be, but hopefully he can stay. Well, I mean, I think it's I don't know. It's pretty realistic seeing the pace that he plays at. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't stop. He, he really does not anything. No, God, Very no. True. In like the 80... We had the hardest working minutes. left wing in the in the league. Yeah, Barco's going to... He's going to have, at least in work ethic, I'm, I'm excited to see what he brings to the table because it looked like he was right on par with Assad, if not better in that in that regard whenever they were playing the Copa Sudamerica. So, yeah, I don't know. Where do we where do we go from here? We're, we're running low on time, but we had a he, couple you, other you things. We were talking about... Gaza, do you want to talk about how he's going to be playing back up to this $9 million dollar? Oh, oh, yeah, guy. that's right. That's right. Olaza? Lucas Olaza or whatever. What, I mean, it? I think we've made it. I think as a team, we have <laughs> <Yeah>. made it. <laughs> we have absolutely made it whenever there's a team down in... He plays for Newell? Newell's or does he play for Independiente? No, I, he I plays think in Argentina. He doesn't play in Argentina, I don't think. I thought he does played he, for... I thought he played in Argentina. But I thought he played for like... Oh, maybe maybe he does. It's like Yentes or something. No, Tayeris de Ta- Cordova. Tayeris. I knew there was a two two L's in there. Anyway, I think it's I think it's pretty amazing that I don't know these the ownership group or the the management down there doesn't understand MLS rules, seeing our roster and and <laughs> in our in our construction no. to know that there's not a chance for signing that guy. <laughs> Sorry, I mean we we could probably help you inflate that dollar amount, but I, I never even heard of the guy to yeah. be honest. Yeah. No. Um. Dirty South Soccer has done some research into this uh, rumor, and there's, I can tell you, there's nothing to it. Yeah. <laughs> At least from what we, we've heard. It's club. nice that money plus Argentina equals Atlanta United. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I'm sure, no, I'm sure uh, after what we've done, uh, agents will start using Atlanta United oh, yeah. as, a, as a prop to use to try to leverage their player for better deals down the line. And it's only Southern happens, South happens America. everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Only Southern South American players. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Paraguayans <laughs> and Uruguayans and, and Argentinians. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, I think I thought that was pretty crazy to see that show up. It's like, uh, first of all, we have the best left back in the league. Right. We have a serviceable backup in Chris McCann. And yeah, we already but, bought a left back. <laughs> we, yeah, already, we already yeah. bought a left back this Jose window. Hernandez. Right. Yeah. The, the forgotten man. Yeah, I know, really. It's interesting. I, I thought he was signed for USL, but it really looks like he's going to be with he, the first is team. Is he training with the first team? Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. He's got a locker in the first team locker room and everything. Going to have to update my spreadsheet. So next week, are you going to break the news whenever on our show whenever Mikey Ambrose gets the Jacob Peterson <laughs> treatment? <laughs> I hope to God I don't have to do that, but... <laughs> Uh, we're just riding your coattails over here. <laughs> the so schedule of events for Nashville. Do you want to get to that real okay, quick? Okay, so I have some bad news. Um, Princess Hot Chicken. No, the, no, no. Just let just hear me out. It's not twenty four hours like I thought it was. First of all, it's open until four a.m. on Fridays and Saturdays. That said, <laughs> it does not open on Saturday until like noon or something like that which is going to be way too late, I think, for us to get there. I think the other one open... They have a south location that's open at 11, so we'll be doing that one. We'll make sure we tweet out the address. We're still going to do it. It'll just be at the different... It's not the... Not the first Princess Hot Chicken. satellite oh, location. Yeah. This it's a satellite just, location, just which is a bummer bush, for me. Bush league. It is a bummer for me. God, um, you're so unprepared. I want to see the chipped and broken vinyl tiles in the place and the splinters on the wall that's I'm glad I'm not going up. now. I'm glad. It's my favorite part about Princess Hot Chicken, or one of my favorite parts about it, is it's, if uh, you, the fire stomach afterwards. Well that and the sting <laughs> ring that soon follows. Um <laughs> but the uh if you try to everybody wants to take an artistic picture of their food, you know, it's just a thing people do. Yeah. Go to Princess Hot Chicken Yelp page. It cannot be done. You cannot <laughs> take a flattering picture of that chicken. <laughs> it is just soaked in hot sauce in a plastic mangled bag oh. with a piece of white bread on it and a couple of pickles, but it is so good. Um, yeah, so we'll do Princess Hot Chicken. We're going to do the South location. I think we planned on 11 because the pregame uh, event, Jason, you can DM him for e uh, details about that. I think it's at like Vaughn. Elrod Sausage Fest or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. Garza and Kratz um, are going to be there. Eating <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get some knock- knockwurst and some spatzel. And uh, what's his face? Um, Della Lee. He's going to be there too. Oh, Deli Alley? Yeah. Oh. He's going to be at this. Any sausage what do you, fest. What? <laughs> <laughs> no. but, 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> dear God. That man has had an embarrassing run over the past oh. year or so. Yeah, we do have you on the show. What do you make of oh. this sex tape? <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't be that embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh dear God. Okay. Yeah. What, um, do you, what, are you, what are you gonna do? You know, your, your phone gets hacked, uh, you're ma- you're making love to a beautiful woman, you know. <laughs> you make freaking millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's, well, you you strangely gave somebody your phone to Snapchat you doing it, <laughs> as one does. And you give them a, just as, a nice smile from across the room. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um. Anyway, there's that other party that's happening adjacent to the stadium in Nashville, which I think starts at 11:30. It's from like 11:30 to 2:30, and then they'll do the march into the stadium. Um. So we want to make sure that we plan it. You and I just need to get together. We'll make sure we tweet out all the details, uh, put it in the show notes. But tentative plan is to meet at the south location of Prince's Hot Chicken for Home Before Dark pre-pre game when they open at 11 o'clock. So yes. we can just swarm the gates, post up shop there, get a good hot chicken base in, and then we'll head over to the pre-game at the sausage party. Or whatever. I think that sounds good. We had one other comment I did want to get to, and I thought it would be a fun experiment. As a new guy I've seen in the in the chat tonight, Al Coleman, he asked... I, I, I have to scroll too much through too much to see it, but the question was, what five MLS teams could you see making the playoffs? And I think probably what he was trying to get at is, what other five teams in the East do the you East? see, other than Atlanta making the playoffs? Any mm-hmm. surprise teams? Any surprise names coming in here? We know that a couple people have been active to try and match us mm-hmm. between oh, yeah. between DC, uh, Columbus doing some. I think they're just trying to bomb this year so that it doesn't look so bad on them to to go down to Austin. <laughs> Agree. With, with the Austin faithful down there protesting their arrival. <laughs> it's pretty fantastic seeing all the hippies out there with signs saying we don't want public public land to be destroyed for a stadium. It's their second time having a team anyway, right? Austin, not an MLS team, but they had the USL team. I that turned no in, idea. USL That's, team turned into Orlando. The and Aztecs? Orla- Austin. I I, yeah, I think I have heard something about that. Yeah, They moved to Orlando. That was Orlando City. Wait, Orlando so City the USL to, team... Turn yeah, into Orlando, they but bought, they still play like a USL moved. team. I'm um, no, they just play. so so the, so the history. It's it's almost like the Browns right now, probably trying to claim that 2000 and whatever it was, 2001. And Doesn't then the Alabama 2000- football do that with like four championships at this point? <laughs> <laughs> but it would be like the Browns claiming a Ravens championship at this point, the way that Orlando <laughs> claims because Louisville City is Orlando. Right, that was the Orlando USL team that had won those championships, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, really? Yeah, something crazy like that. If not, I just love throwing that shade. Anyway, five other teams making the playoffs. I say DC makes it. What do you guys think? Really? Okay, I think I think I'll, I'll last, say, last okay. year I think was an aberration with well, that DC team. Yeah, I think they'll be improved. I I. I don't know if they'll make it. Hold on, let's see. let's let's go through it. So, so Atlanta, are we all in unison? NYCFC, yeah, Toronto. And Toronto. Gonna, and I Toronto. thought, I thought Toronto. you were going to say, are you all in unison? Supporter Shield for Atlanta United? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we'll probably be you know the Invincibles this year. Um, <laughs> so we have those three. So it's basically down to three other spots. Well, I've to cut fill. a lot of pieces out of this table. <laughs> I don't know how much this is going to hold up. <laughs> I think the fire will be worse than they were last year. But I, I think, agree. But I think they'll. I think they'll might just sneak into the playoffs. I think they'll be in the fight, but I think it. Yeah, they could fall out. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if they're not in it. But um. So who else do we have? Uh, Columbus Crew. They're not going to be in it. New York Red Bulls. Everyone. Everyone is kind of just like forgetting about them. I feel like um n- like they haven't really done anything major. I feel like, but they're getting they're getting some really good guy. Uh, Kaku, I forget his his name is like something Gamara. He's he had really he has really good uh, underlying like uh, stats, the xg, the expected goals, all that stuff. Right. Toyota Football knows all about him. Uh, I think he'll be really good. I think Red Bulls will make the playoffs. And then uh, who else? Oh, I think Orlando is going to make playoffs. Actually, sorry, <sighs> no, I, I think they're going to make it. I think I, yeah, th- they are not built for long term success, but they have like put everything into the the next two seasons. So if, if the last three seasons might squeak them in. or the last two seasons w- weren't enough for the ownership group to oust Jason Christ, they've given him a team to make the playoffs yeah, this year. Right. Yeah, they don't have the distraction of Kyle Lahren getting DUIs and actually not playing well at all. Dude, alongside when that Don happened, Dwyer. it's not like they were at the top of the 
division or something. They were, weren't they? They no, were. They I were near they the were top. All, I thought they were already on their slide at yeah, that maybe, point. Maybe, maybe they were. I'm pretty sure they were well into their slide at that point because that wasn't. They did get off to a good start, but I think they, they were sliding. At I, the, I thought they were. I could happened. be wrong, Tim, but I normally am. <laughs> it, yeah, does, it doesn't you know, matter where they started; it's where they ended. And, up. And, exactly. And Rob Swick is on the wrong side up. of the road. Rob Swick has <laughs> backed me up on the the whole moving of Austin to Orlando up to Louisville. So your history doesn't mean shit, yeah, Orlando. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> You're claiming somebody else's championships. I yeah, Columbus is going to be really bad. I mean, they traded away their best striker for Jesse's artist. Yeah, I think they'll be the worst team in the league. That's, my, that's so? my prediction. Yeah, I do. Or w- in, than- in, in the Eastern Conference. Sorry, I, I think they'll finish last in the East. Columbus, Columbus. Throwing away <sighs> every good piece. They've, they, I, I guess they have Iguain, but I think Zardis is think absolute just trash. Before the move. They got rid of their best midfielder, too, and Justin Miram. Yeah, yeah Miram's gone. Um, Kamara, yeah. Their so defense I, I wasn't solid that great last year. They still have Zach Steffen in goal, and he was fantastic And last I just year. feel like the morale there this season is just going to be so bad. Like, I just can't see it being a good year for them yeah okay so we're in unison on the top three i i think i think new york red bulls always find a way you saw I'm that last year that camp. Yeah. yeah they get rid of their one of their dps in the offseason i can't remember the guy's name the argentine guy um uh veron yeah yeah, yeah. Just, or gonzalo veron well, well, he Verone. wasn't he just wasn't fit. No, he, he wasn't yeah. that good this no. new guy they got will be way better than no him. They, they cut the fat with him for sure tyler adams is gonna be i mean he's a monster yeah. And he's still 17, 18 years old. Yep. And I don't know. Uh, yeah. I still think, I think DC will sneak in. I think Chicago is going to be, I think Chicago is probably not going to make drop the playoffs. Out. I think so. I could they, see it. They definitely like hit a, hit a Schneid at the end of the season. Yeah. And I, I mean, Schweinsteiger, if that's really what they're anchoring their team on, it's not really, yeah. yeah. Not the most stable foundation. And I mean, then, yeah, no, I agree. Um, I mean, what do you think of Montreal? 36, 35. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, no, yeah. He's definitely getting up there. He's 30, I, I think he's 35 or 36 here. I think you're right. The, I don't know. Montreal? Yeah, what do you make of Montreal? They they lose Simon, that twat. Oh, yeah, he was just dumb. piotti has gone, right? right? Did he play his last season? He retired? Uh, I know he talked about it. I have no clue. No, I, I have think no he's, idea. I think Piotti's coming back. Um, you know, I mean, Domodoro... No, he's still there. Yeah, he's yeah. still there. Jackson Hamill's still there. That's or no? right. Mancuso is still there. Um, they were they were a pretty solid team. They they were mathematically not eliminated. I don't think until like the last two weeks of the season. They were fighting for that sixth yeah. spot with they New York. They seemed to like really mess it up. Like they got a good run of form there for a little while, and then just couldn't put it together at the end. Kind of like we couldn't put it together at the end. It's true. It's true. I'm not going to hide it. The four, you know, so we had four games. We just needed a win and we'd have been in the bye. Yep. All right. Anyway, I think that's about doing that for us this week, right? Yeah, I think you we have do have to wrap Kevin. up. I've had enough of this shit. I think we do have to wrap up. Um, <laughs> At least we went out with a whimper. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Started with a roar. Uh, Thank you guys for tuning in. Ugh. Huh. Started with a roar. Ugh. Why did I do that? Yeah. Ugh. They've ruined so many things. Yeah. Thanks, I'll be Orlando. down there in two weeks. Wow! 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 All right, guys. Thanks for checking us out. Uh, Joe, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks yeah, for having thanks, me. Again. Um, I appreciate it. As always, we're gonna plug all the things now. Joe, H Dads, H Dad, Five Stripe Final. I already gave the plug earlier. Where about on Twitter? Uh, at Five Stripe Final, spelled out five. Um, yeah, and you can find and you can find the H Dad on all your podcast platforms. Basically, all the ones that are important. Google Play, Apple, cool. uh, that kind of stuff. And yeah. if they want just you, where can they find you at? Oh, I'm at uh, J.A. Patrick 200 on Twitter. Cool. Yep. Excellent. Tim, what about you? You find me at Tim Herb. And Dan? You can find me at DNJMS. You can find me as well at The Architect. That's at the underscore A-R-C. Number one, T-E-C-T. Collectively, at Home Before Dark. That's before, spelled B. And then number four, We'll tweet out the details of our Nashville hot chicken meetup, the pre-pre-game, uh, and then we will be out at the pre-game and march into Nashville Stadium. And we look forward to seeing all you guys, and we will also see you next week for an all-new episode. Until then, as always, be home before dark. Bye, Assad. You're my boy, Assad!